we do have blue team. This is the final game. This wow. is it, right? This is the best is two it, out right. of three. Blue team is going to be Athlete, Limbo, Calamity, Starkey, Ninja Monkey versus Best, Loki, and A, Misery Business, The Silent Knight, Brick, and Totaler. Now, the first band coming out of blue team is Athena, very standard, and a Loki band. That's right to Best, Loki, and A. This is, this is it. Like, this is the game. All of the games we've done over the last two to three weeks have led down to this so do you think do you think these players are feeling a little bit of pressure right now all of them you know they've been practicing playing really hard the last couple of weeks playing consistently in these sub games and now it all comes down to this these last three games do you think or two games yeah it could be a flat stop a by pressure? all we know and red team does not actually ban i think that was a mistake let's find out um hold on They might, they might have just left it open, but that is not what I wanted. Would like to actually see Ban rip. Allied and happy, rawr. We actually, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see. Allied W, no, what they're going to pick to first here. Yeah. Uh, we're actually going to see a Thor locked in All by right, Athlete I'll let it right fly away. for now. I'll let it fly for now. As yeah. Thor is first picked for the blue team now let's see what the red team bans out here as boom best loki and a misery business do have a lot open right there's sylvanas being available they could take away athletes i would take pick. away i would take away the sylvanas pick right now if totaler can play it definitely don't put it in athletes hands although i do not think athlete will be supporting i think it's actually going to go to calamity that's kind of why he picked him we saw athlete get a lot of success out of the jungle the last game he played in the qualifiers he played fenrir went 16 and 5 so maybe he can feel maybe he feels confident going into the jungle again playing that thor uh we'll see though guess what uh, that we don't Ymir, know until the trades come out guess what the ymir is going to that is going to be totaler's ymir right there oh yeah support mm -hmm. totaler has played pretty much only ymir and has made it into the top 10 well, well actually he's in the top 12 he did get 12th place just under top 10 but Marirath is not here could not make it so totally will be taking his spot now Agni locked in why do you think Agni was picked here uh that's definitely going to the silent night maybe because they could just couldn't think of something to pick here you know maybe they had to just force something out before the timer ran out and the silent night wanted Agni and Agni is always a good pick regardless of the situation in my opinion so yeah yeah i do like the agni pick and we see artemis hovered over by silent knight here i do like that going against cupid we've seen that time and time again in the past it does really well i do not know who that will be going to though uh big could question be brick, here. right i mean can it brick could actually be brick. play we've artemis seen, we've seen brick play artemis and ad carry in the past he's done relatively well doing it but does that mean he trusts misery business in the jungle? That's a very big yeah. role to play in a big game. Like, I, you know, in big game, in big boy games, it's really hard to jungle. You know, even if we consider this a big boy game, it, they're feeling pressure right now. All these players are feeling something inside of them that if they mess up, they know that everyone that has played in these sub game qualifiers or is just a casual viewer is going to see them make that mistake. So, they really want to play their best game here, and do you really trust yourself? It, it, it's it's a lot of trust in yourself, a lot of confidence in yourself in these games. Do you trust yourself to play well? Do you trust yourself with the god you're picking? You know, you you gotta you gotta be confident in yourself, and that's really important. So obviously, we've had these players play for the past two to three weeks. I'm going to inform the chat if you are new here or you're just spectating this game. This is the final game, best two out of three. These players have been playing for over three weeks now and the prizes that are on the line are not only skin codes of choice which are going to be the newer skins that are available onto smite but also it's pretty much six thousand gems worth of prizes right and obviously you can buy a lot with that many gems being on the line jesus christ yes, that, that is... six thousand gems that's so much like i don't even know what to do with six thousand gems i'd probably get it made into real money and just take a bath in it or something well obviously it will be split up but yeah, that is generally like the both these teams are fighting for not only gems, which is worth a lot of money, but skin codes. So it's pretty good. These guys, these players have been getting better. And really, let's talk about 
kind of the player improvement, AC Pierce. So who do you think out of these 10 have improved the most? As we see Vulcan and Jean Kuei actually locked in for the blue team. I would only assume Jean Kuei solo. Vulcan solo is still a possibility, but very unlikely. Um, I would have actually liked to see maybe a, a most improved player uh, out of the whole sub-game qualifiers. It's kind of a mini uh, kind of reward at the end, like we had with the top damage and stuff. But out of all these players, who we've seen improve the most... Uh, it's really tough, but I'm gonna have to probably go with, oh jeez, that's really tough actually. I, I'm gonna have to go with Ninja Monkey, you know, the first couple games he did play in the sub-game qualifiers, he didn't do so hot. Then suddenly, he started catching fire. He played Hades, and he carried, and I guess that just kind of got him so much momentum. Uh, he did, he does make some mistakes sometimes, he does get too over-aggressive, but for the most part, he's trying to fix that, he's getting better as the days go on. So, I'm going to have to give the 10 players out of all these players, the one that improved the most is, in my opinion, Ninja Monkey. Really? I don't know if you okay, agree with me or not, but yeah. I, I think um, out of all the players, the one I've seen improve the most is Starkey. I mean, really, when Starkey kind of came into play, it was very hit or miss, and now we're starting to see a little bit more consistency. And really, like, y you see him pick a lot of gods and that just are unorthodox, and he's made himself into like this unorthodox jungler that could really potential not only can he play other roles and bring anything to the table but he's very aggressive and we I didn't agree. see that when yeah. Starkey first came into the scene I mean Ninja Monkey has brought a lot of gods to the table but we don't see the same level of consistency as we see out of Starkey but as the teams are locked in the final teams lineups will be Athlete on Sylvanas Cupid is going to be played by Limbo Calamity will be playing Vulcan I would only assume middle Ninja Monkey is Jean Kuei solo, and Starkey will be the Thor jungle. Best Loki NA is playing Boxer solo. Misery Business will be the artist. He's going to be playing AD Carry for the red team. The Silent Knight is Agni. Brick will be playing Humbats, and Totaler will be played by Ymir. Now, looking at both lineups, just not including skill alone, what do you think is the better team comp here, Ace Bear? Jeez, that's tough. Uh, you know... That, that's actually really tough, because looking at Red Team, you do see the disparity to, between Ymir and Sylvanas, but Ymir, we've seen Totaler do so well on it. And if we're going off Team Comp alone, I definitely have to give it to maybe Blue Team. Ah, that's really tough. But, I, you know, actually, no, I'm going to give it to Red Team. They've got the Agni mid, which does well in any situation. Uh, they've got the Hoonbats jungle, which we've seen do very well in the past. Artemis, who counters Cupid from what we've seen in Bakasura, who has just been amazing in these sub-game qualifiers, regardless of who's been playing them. Uh, he's just dominated games. We've seen Bakasura single-handedly carry their teams to victory, rotating into Gold Furies, getting some big multi-kills, and even securing some Gold Furies. So... I'm gonna have to go with Bacchus, or I'm gonna have to go with Red Team on this one simply because they have those those gods. But Blue Team, that that, that does not count them out. They definitely this definitely is a winnable game for them. They have Thor, they have Sylvanas, which are arguably two of the best characters in the game. But then they have some questionable picks as well. We see Vulcan, who I really don't don't disagree with. I still think he's a fine choice. Uh, definitely a good pick in my opinion. But that's my opinion. You know, maybe if Calamity can play it well, he'll do okay. Uh, Ninja Monkey on Zhang, which we, we haven't, haven't really seen, we've never seen him play too good. Yeah, we haven't even yeah, seen we've... many people in these qualifiers pick Zhang Kui at all. Yeah. So for him to bring it in the soul lane with Bakasura available, what do you think he has planned for this game? Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's been practicing it under the covers. We haven't really been paying attention to a lot of what players are playing. Uh, I mean, for the most part... I, I really don't know. I, I mean, he, he must have something up his sleeve, but going against Bakasura, that's a really big task. Now, this will be kind of Brick's... I mean, we've seen Brick jungle in the past, but we know him more of like mid lane, soul lane, and AD carry. So Brick is playing Humbats. Have you had the pleasure of playing with his Humbats, Ace Bear? I have never played with his Humbats, but I can tell you one thing that, like we've said before, these players are under a little bit of pressure, right? And Brick, like we saw in that Joust match, does not do well under pressure. I mean, I love the guy, he's my friend and all that, but he's even admitted to it, he does not do well under pressure. That's probably his biggest weakness. And taking on the jungle role just like that, that does a lot to him. Um, he, 
Well, I don't know. Ace Appear, before you continue that thought, I will be introducing both the teams today. It, for the red team, out of the top 10, it will be Totaler on support playing Ymir. Misery Business will be our AD carry playing Artemis in the Hunter position. Brick will be Jungle Hun Bats for the red team. And Best Loki NA will be playing Bakasura with the lovable Silent Knight playing Agni Middle. Now for the blue team. We have Athlete playing Sylvana Support. Limbo will be our Cupid AD carry. Calamity will be playing Vulcan Middle. Starkey will be playing Thor Jungle. And Ninja Monkey will be our Jean Kuei Solo. So, do you expect any kind of invades here, Ace Pair? No, I don't think so. I mean, if anyone's going to do an invade, it's going to be the blue team. They do have the Jean Kui scroll and the Thor level one. But for the most part, I don't expect to see an invade here. That might be a little too risky in a big game like this. Well, you don't want to see a mistake. But we do see red team grouping. Yeah, we do indeed see red team. They might just be warding, though. We don't know yet. And it looks like that's exactly what they're doing. They're ex escorting Toddler to board. But then they're kind of staying. Four of them are, are all five of them are there. I don't think they see Sylvanas in the duo lane. And it looks like Sylvanas is just going to back. And red team's going to back up here. Yes, now we do see the aggressive wards kind of coming out of red team. I love this. So this is what usually professional players do in in tournaments, especially if they're not unsure of like kind of a, an invade happening is they'll group up. They'll group up as a five-man team, level one, and just make sure the support can safely ward to kind of watch any invades as the red team does place a ward kind of near uh, like middle lane. Actually, there are two wards near covering the entrance of middle lane to cover any kind of uh, aggressive paths. So those wards are going to help out the Silent Knight, maybe even uh, set him up with some rotations. How do you feel about that, Ace yeah, I mean, he's already on Agni. I don't agree with necessarily that much protection. I mean, Silent Knight being a mid lane player, he should have some sort of uh, recognition. I, I mean, not recognition, just he should be able to recognize that the enemy jungler, when he leaves the soul lane, is going to be coming to his lane. He doesn't need that much protection, especially on a god like Agni. So, I don't necessarily agree. They could have placed those wards a little bit better, but maybe they know something we don't. They might be planning something. Uh, we never will know, but for the most part, we do see Silent Knight out clearing Calamity at level 1, and we're just going to be expected to see that Calamity actually opted to level his backfire first, not his turret, so you being the Vulcan, allied Vulcan, you usually level the turret first, right? I will get turret level 1, but backfire uh -huh. is very situational. Maybe he saw something that I didn't. I, there are times where I have gotten backfire level 1. Now, uh -huh. Ace Spirit being the mid lane expertise, or expert here, I'm sure you agree that Agni does have the advantage in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, definitely we're going to see a lot more poke coming out of Agni than we will from Vulcan, but do not count out his meatballs uh, and, and his one combos. You know, the meatball one combo is actually really strong, and if he opts to level the turret first, he, he'll definitely have some damage to, to put out there, so Agni needs to be careful on top of... It, it, this lane could honestly go either way, in my opinion. Agni does get the small advantage with his safe uh, kit, but for the most part, it could go either way. Vulcan is really good at putting, outputting damage, and I really don't know why he's not played more. I mean, suddenly he goes from being first ban in in competitive tournaments to you know not, not even at looked all. at. Yeah, yeah. now and he, over no, he suffered no in nerves. the dual lane, Limbo and Brick are going toe to toe. It is a three to four versus two. Athlete could definitely get pressured here. I don't know if they have enough damage to take him down. We do see Mischievous is not in position as Athlete takes quite a bit of poke and ooh, almost kind mm. of pulling someone under tower there. Athlete is just going to kind of reset there with the red team as quick four man rotation. Shout out to Mario Wrath if he was here. The two minute checkup is real. Yeah, uh, that was a really big rotation there. I, you know, I think if Misery Business would have been in a little better position there, maybe that potentially could have been a kill. But it, it might just be his inexperience as an AD carry, not knowing where to stand in a situation like that, where you do have four people from your team in your lane. Uh, oh, Mr. Biz does get athlete, pulled over the dual lane. Pull. Yeah, yeah it, he could have... actually go down here. Uh, we, there's Misery... a freeze coming out from Ymir. Really nice blocking by Toddler, and it looks like Misery Business is juking well so far, but it's, he's not going to get away. The wall doesn't come up in time. Really unfortunate. And First Blood does go to Limbo. 
Yeah, Limbo getting very nice first blood there. Athlete with a swift pull as we do see the blue team setting up for mid right harpies. Athlete is going to be able to get mid left, and that's going to be double mid harpies for the blue team, giving them quite the advantage early game as Brick and the Silent Knight are not in position. And meanwhile, uh, yeah, Ninja Monkey actually gets wow. soloed by best Loki and A. Looks like just an ultimate Ninja Monkey. I mean, that's kind of like the problem with John Quay, right? Not very safe, can't fall behind. Do you expect Best Loki and A to carry this? I mean, we've seen this matchup over and over again, and Best Loki and A usually has nin Ninja Monkey's, uh, you know, ticket, pretty much. He just Yeah, I, I, I think, honestly, that's what we kind of expected going into this matchup. Bakasur has just been so dominant in lane. We always see when we do have a Bakasur in-game, I'd say about uh, roughly 80% of the time being a very guesstimated number uh, that he does get the 1v1 kill in the solo lane when he's going against, you know, a solo laner below the tier of Ninja Monkey or Ninja Monkey. We've seen some solo laners not really be experienced, not know what to expect out of a Bakasur and just die multiple times. Uh, but yeah, I, I kind of expected that coming out of this matchup. Zhang, although he is tanky, he's not tanky enough to handle Bakasur. And in the duel lane, we have an ultimate coming out from Cupid. The Sylvanas ult comes out as well. Totaler is going to go down here. Misery Business, not even being level 5, can't really peel for his support. And another kill goes the way of Lim... Or, uh, actually, it goes to Sylvanas that time. Yeah, Athlete getting a kill. Good old-fashioned Wrath of Terror, Fields of Love combination. And really, dual lane is kind of taking control here as Athlete does aggress onto the mid lane, forcing the Silent Knight to dash away, kind of putting some breathing room for Calamity. Now, we do have the soul lane for blue team is losing, but the dual lane is winning. Now, really, it's going to come to the best Loki and A to make the key rotations. I mean, it, it does suck that Limbo is playing Cupid, but he's getting a very nice early game advantage, and this is the power of Cupid being able to control the lane early game to help your team get the lead that they need. Now, it's up to Limbo to carry this out to mid to late game, right? We actually see in the right side, Brick and Boom are going to go for the red buff. Starkey actually up in the air, lands on top of Brick. Huge takes a lot of Vulcan damage, goes Ultimate. down to the Vulcan Rocket. And it looks like Brick and Boom were just kind of getting a little aggressive there. They did get the blue buff, but we might see that a lot more coming out of Brick. He might just play the safe jungle kind of role where you see the lane that gets ahead and you just kind of camp that lane. We see that a lot. And Silent actually gets Whoa! by Athlete, goes down to Calamity immediately. Really nice plays coming out of Calamity. The Sylvanas Vulcan combo really strong. Vulcan, people still underestimate his damage to this day. I really don't understand why. I mean, I play him in ranked all the time just fine. I'm constantly doing top damage on my team. And I feel like I, I feel like he's still good. You know, he went from being a first ban or top pick to not not even being mentioned without suffering any nerfs. All it was was the map change. I guess you can't play him AD carry now, but what difference does that actually make? You can still play him mid, play him solo if you want. Still a very strong god, and you see him going 2-0-0 here to start off the game. Really nice play by Calamity. I mean, Calamity is 2-0-0. Zero zero. He is not top gold in the game, but really has kind of been there. His Vulcan ultimate to help kind of defend the right side soul lane blue buff was... Ooh, it was huge as blue team confirms another set of mid harpies. What do you think is in store next for red team? I mean, they, they do need to force a fight in their advantage or else they're going to fall too far behind in experience and in gold. Looking at the graphs right now, blue team is up 2,000 experience. We, may, we need to see a pick come out of red team here and then have a rotation over from best Loki and a to secure a gold fury. He's really their kind of beacon right now of hope looking at 1-0 zero and 0, but he is just beating the hell out of this Jean Kui. So I, I'd like to see maybe a big rotation out of him that would really help his team get back into this game. If he does lose his tower, so what? As long as you can maybe secure a gold fury and help your team get back into this one, you'll be a lot better for yourself. And Starkey's going to die on that kind of gank rotation. Starkey goes down and uh, it looks like a 2v1. Best look in A aggressing, diving Ninja Monkey Ooh. in the soul lane. And Best look in A is going to back off as Totaler. Totaler is there to help him. But meanwhile, on the sidelines, Brick is there. They can definitely dive him. He is way out of position. The Humbat's ultimate is out. Great positioning for the Ninja Monkey towards Totaler. There's the freeze. And Brick picks up a kill. Kind of a failed gank attempt there by Starkey. He ulted in onto soul lane. And he just... Failed completely, being three levels behind. Best look in A, and now we actually have Blue Team starting the Gold Fury here on the left side of the map. Misery Business doing his best to try and prevent it. We do not see the board come out of him yet. I expect to see a tomb 
soon. The Vulcan Rocket comes out, and it looks like the Gold Fury is below Hog Threshold, but Limbo's taking a lot of damage here, could potentially die to Misery Business, and he's not going to go down. He's barely going to get out. Who got Silent the gold? doing the best he can to look for a kill onto Athlete, and Blue Team actually secures the Gold Fury. Nice stun by Silent Eye onto Starkey, and it looks like Blue Team's just going to do a really hard disengage here. They're all really low, but Red Team doing a very poor job of cleaning up some easy kills there, and... That was Good crazy. Play by blue team. Yeah. yeah, that was crazy. I mean, they recognized that Starkey and Ninja Monkey went down onto Soul Lane. Humbat's ultimate was down. They weren't able to kind of rotate quick enough. And really, that was a nail biter. The, the first goal fear does go to blue team. Four to three. Blue team is going to find themselves being 2k gold in the lead. Now, can they can they transition this? I mean, right now, the only lane that is losing and struggling is Ninja Monkey being three levels behind best Loki in A. Are we going to see another Baka Surkar? We actually might, and I'm I'm hesitant to say that because his team's not doing so hot. They are behind, although he is very far ahead. Uh, you know, he has to make it. Like, if Blue Team gets another Gold Fury, then this game's really going to start to head in their favor, and I don't think there's anything Pakasura can do. So, you know, there's eight minutes into the game. Blue Team only has about a hun or a thousand, a thousand, twelve hundred gold lead. So. Ah, uh, you know, there's really, the red team's really not out of it. It's going to come down to, like you said, the Bakasura making a big play at the Gold Fury to try and help his team get back into this one. Yes, now, the next fight that would be the most predictable fight would be mid harpies both mid harpies are coming up we could see a rotation i want to see more rotations coming out of best look in a i mean he does have a severe advantage over ninja monkey being not only six six hundred gold up as we have the humbats ultimate onto two people starkey and athlete are in a tight spot starkey goes down best loki is chewing on the tree right now but ninja monkey's there with a good ult forcing both of them to kind of back up but meanwhile in the back line there's silent knight he does dash into ninja monkey he is taking a ton of damage but there is a disengage, but both mid harpies are still available. It looks like they're just going to trade this one one for one, as Starkey is the only death there for the blue team. As he's right now 0 2 and 1. This is unexpected, right, Isip here? Uh, yeah, definitely. We usually see Starkey be a very good player. Do you think it's maybe the pressure getting to him? Or something I, like that, maybe? He Okay, so at least here's my assumption. The biggest problem here was that Ninja Monkey, not only did he get a really bad matchup in the solo lane, Bakasura not having too many bad matchups, as we see Best Loki and A actually looking to tower dive and an easy He's tower dive. Yeah, yeah. Putting, putting him that much farther behind. There's the jump, and ooh, barely missing the pull there. But the biggest thing here is that Starkey helped the losing lane where he should have just been reinforcing the stronger lane to win. So even if, let's say, Starkey was able to kill the best Loki NA, the, here's the decision you have to make as a jungler, right? You have to be able to choose, well, do I help the winning lanes or do I help a, a losing lane? Even if, even if Ninja Monkey gets a kill, that's still going to be a losing lane just because Bakasura, especially with that much of an advantage, is guaranteed going to still kill Zhang Kui. So I probably would have left Soul Lane alone, let Ninja Monkey just kind of feed and fall behind and just helped middle and dual lane where th those are the only two lanes winning for blue team right now. Yeah, I mean, we see, I, while you were talking, we kind of saw a little aggression there from Brick going into the blue team's jungle, trying to steal some jungle buffs, and I, while I do like the aggression in the enemy team's jungle, he is behind, so he has to be a little careful here. Uh, actually, he's not behind Starkey, so honestly, the aggression is good. It's just he has to be careful. He has to watch for rotations. They need to get, if they're going to do that, they need more, like, hyper-aggressive wards to steal jungle buffs. Um, it's kind of risky right now if he does get caught out. The game is that close where that one kind of caught, catch out could really cost them maybe a gold fear or a big objective like a tower or something. Yeah, absolutely. As we see Brick actually counter warding, taking out a ward over here by the mid-right harpies and Brick might look to kind of engage onto Ninja Monkey. Now this is a very smart jungle play. Let's just keep putting behind the Zhang Kui solo to the point where it's going to be Unviable, really, and, and that's the problem with John Quay. And I, I'm really surprised they did not ban Loki in the third banning phase. I mean, best Loki in A has been really dominant on three characters Loki, Bakasura, and Kronos, right? Those are his three best characters that we've seen perform in these games. So, leaving open the Bakasura, which is a known kind of like 
one of the more supreme matchups or, or soul lane pickups in all of these sub qualifier games. I, you got to be wondering what blue team is looking to prior. I mean, what do they want done with Ninja Monkey? What is he going to actually be able to do as he falls four levels behind best Loki NA? There's not really much he can do in lane at this point. All he can kind of do is uh, really extremely passively farm, not to give up any more kills to this Bakasura and make him even further ahead. Uh, he can honestly just play the behind game, try and help his team in team fights as much as he can, and he still is Zhang, so his ultimate is still pretty good. He just needs to get the most out of it, and he needs to farm himself up a little better. As red teams confirm the mid left, mid right harpies, it looks like they're actually going to force an engagement on mid left. Starkey, you got to remember, he has fallen so severely far behind. He does pull. There's the hammer throw. He could still die. Starkey in a tight spot. There's the home bats ultimate. Starkey beads in response. He cannot get away in time. Those are beads. One not able to get him out as Brick jumps in, takes a heart bomb to the face, and red team are the aggressors here as Golfier is up. Golfier is available. Red team does pull it. Mystery business is kind of low. He has. Be careful here. There's the, kind of the teleport in that looks like best Loki NA is there. Athlete is there. Huge Wrath of Terror, but in the back line, we do have best Loki NA. Huge He's Vulcan the, ult. Whoa, Jesus that Christ. Vulcan ult. Wow. That, but red team does clean up the rest of blue team here. As remember, Starkey did die early by a huge mistake, and Calamity is just going to get auto down here. We do see a Fatalis online. And wow, he actually does. He's able to disengage from best Loki NA. And red team, they might start to go for you. No. Misery Business is back and Totaler is way too low. Starkey is up and can defend it. And yeah, no goal fury here. Just a, a kind of a team wipe for the blue team. Yeah, I mean, really big Vulcan ult coming out of Calamity there. That definitely helped his team prevent a Gold Fury going in the red team's favor. I mean, if he had not hit that Vulcan ult, we'd be looking at a lead coming out of the red team right now. But really nice play. Out, out of Vulcan in general coming from Calamity this whole game, he's just been playing fantastic coming out of the mid lane. Uh, I, he's His build is what you would typically see out of a Vulcan. Uh, you know, the Warlock Sash, the Purple Boots. So, you know, definitely liking his build, liking his play style, and he's really helping his team win here coming out of the mid lane. Now, the ward does get cleared, but red team is ready to go again. No teleport available out of best low KNA. Don't know if they could win the 4v4 fight. I mean, best low KNA, he is level 17. Everyone else on blue team is around level 11 to level 14. Level 14 being Calamity. Uh, the Vulcan middle. Now, for the 10th place spot, Calamity has proven himself to be quite valuable. I mean, he is 3-0 and 1 with Warlock Sash online on Vulcan, which we've said before, that's usually a counter matchup. I mean, Agni should have the upper hand, but even getting a kill onto the Silent Knight as Wrath of Terror is there. There's the gank on Duel and Misery Business is completely out of position. He does get walled off. There is the ult, but Brick is there for the counter engage. He's going to maybe look to engage here, but doesn't look like it as and no never mind I take that back the Humbats ultimate is out fear no evil as Limbo is getting aggressed on misses the heart bomb there's Silent Knight dashing in hitting one bomb and taking out Limbo meanwhile Brick is extremely no he has to be careful but so is Starkey Starkey kind of walking away there Totaler has his freeze available soon looking to freeze Starkey is going to get dashed on Totaler picks up a kill for himself but Calamity with the God ultimate able to take out two people Brick is in a tight spot Calamity might be able to get a triple kill here and misses the backfire he needs to hit one ability but it doesn't matter best loki and a is there to peel there is the best loki and a ultimate and calamity is in a tight spot the peel is there trying to uh, distance himself there's the turret and silent Knight actually picks up athlete in the back line but ninja monkey is there looking to take out the creeps are blocking him he's not able to actually pick up the kill as calamity sacrifices himself to the tower and the jonque ult was wasted there acp wow wow really big engagement and that really was a nice series of events for red team unfortunately they cannot do gold fury off of that but i mean that was just great all around by all, every player i mean brick with the nice reinitiation and then the great rotation coming out of best loki na to kind of save his teammates life in misery business kind of killing that that vulcan who was a really big target i mean he was five and oh before that death so he's definitely worth a lot of gold going in the way of boom who's already so far ahead so that's just gonna he's just gonna be so fed now he's 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 definitely a force to be reckoned with if i'm blue team i'm definitely scared of this bakasura going into this mid to late game uh, yeah, there's but, really nothing they can do to kind of counter him. Now. I mean, we've seen Bakasura's, when they get ahead like this, 
they just they, they carry the game. There's nothing the other team can do about it. They really don't know how to counter it. It's just not that, you know, they're just not used to it. Now, looking at the player damage chart, we do see Calamity on top with 9k and Bakasora being played by Best Loki and Ada at 8300. It is not looking good as we do have Affley. He is getting aggressed on. There's total is or Affley is already at half health. He is getting aggressed on and he is slow. There's the root on misery business. They could still aggress. The beads are out, but Humbats ult four people. Brick going in, being the aggressor. Best Loki NA is there. There is the Bakasura ultimate as Brick is forced away. There's the jump in. The blink freeze out of totaler as misery business takes out Limbo on the side, and it looks like the first, uh, the second goal fear of the game is going to go to Red Team as, I mean, really, what can Calamity do here besides maybe a giant Volcanol? But Volcanol is down as Silent Knight is aggressing. He is 1v1 against the Silent Knight, but Brick is there. There's the jump in. He could still get Brick a kill. Needs Calamity careful. needs to be so careful, but Calamity cannot get his backfire off in time. And the Red Team just wipes Blue Team there as Ninja Monkey is trying to split push just to catch up. Nice kind of shuffle play there by Brick to come back in really low, recognizing that the Vulcan turret, his monkey or his little space globe thing, will bounce off the turret and hit the Vulcan and finish off his low health. So, you know, nice kind of plays there coming out of Brick. And the, and the red team in general, you can't discredit this team. I mean, they they did kind of claw themselves back into this game. It wasn't looking pretty for them at first. Calamity kind of taking over a little bit from the mid lane with these huge Vulcan rockets. But now... I mean, he's still connecting with these Vulcan ults, and he's still doing most damage in the game. The problem now is his team just doesn't seem to be responding. We see Athlete with the nice setups with his ultimate, but Cupid, I mean, looking at the damage charts, only outputting about 6,200 damage. That's 100 more than his support. And then Thor and, and Zhang both doing at least like less than half of what their support's actually doing so you know i'd like to see more production coming out of them that's just not acceptable and, and especially in a game like this where it's the best of the best in these sub games and you're not even out damaging your support that's yeah, kind that, of unacceptable in my opinion that is very bad i mean really the sean quay pick is not working out we do see the warlock sash and cooldown boots online I, I would assume that is a Chronos Pendant coming out next for Zhang Kuei, but looking at the player damage tab, I mean, we see Cupid, his damage is starting to fall off at this point. Limbo not really making much happen in terms of winning the lane or aggression. And r the big question here is what's going on with Starkey? Starkey at 4,200 player damage, 0 and 5. I mean, he's getting his items done, he's trying to stay in there with the farm, but we haven't seen much out of him uh, past the early game, Ace Pair. Yeah, I mean, that's unusual. We usually see, a, actually, in the duo lane, we have a Yu-Gi-Oh! battle going on. Misery Bins is getting the better of Limbo here, and it looks like he cannot get the Suppress the Insulin off. It is on cooldown, so he will have to return back to the wave, but nice kind of poke out there. Really starting to show his dominance in the lane, and, you know, we don't really see that in a Misery Business. In this game, he kind of was looked at as the weak link, and now he's definitely starting to, you know, make some make some noise in, there in the duo lane, so good on him. I mean, that's also the Artemis versus Cupid matchup for people at home that don't know more of the dual lane matchups, Artemis is kind of the counter to Cupid, being able to not only ult out of Cupid ultimate, which is going to be her faithful Tusky, but she also does outscale Cupid when it comes to mid to late game damage, Artemis being the overall better team fight character, and we're going to see a lot more of Mr. Biz as Red Team's doing Fire Giant, AC Pier. I mean, Totaler does use his ultimate, and it looks like there's no contest, no one's in position, wow. and a free Fire Giant for the Red Team, as we do have Starkey wow. there, there's the dash in by Silent Knight, looking to aggress, Starkey is going to beat out of that, he is trying to ult out, he barely gets out, huge Wrath of Terror hitting three people, Brick has forced the Humbat's ultimate out of there, Athletes all by himself, best Loki NA is chewing up everybody, as he's 2v1, forced to jump out of Jean Quai ultimate, as the Silent Knight picks up Athlete on the side, and really, there's nothing Blue Team can do here. Yeah, we see the Surrender Vote coming out. They're starting to get a little demoralized. Uh, now, let's kind of look at where these players were picked. Athlete did have the first pick, and he did first pick Calamity, who has kind of paid off. You know, he's doing really well, kind of keeping his team in this game for as much as the early game went. But now you see Red Team with the Fire Giant. Ymir actually blinking into mid, doing some big damage on a Ninja Monkey, trying to get out as best as he can. We'll go down to the Agni Bomb. And nice Aegis by Silent Knight to kind of dodge the tower damage, but it did actually hit him, so never mind. And then we see Boom in the right lane, taking it out in the tower. But back to these picks, we did see Starkey pick second, or uh, technically third overall by Athlete. And, you know, 
it's not paying. He's it's not, not paying. Yeah, he, up, he's right? not paying off for what for what he was actually picked. Uh, you know, and even Zhang. You know, Zhang is a character where we usually see when we see a Zhang Kui in a game, we see it dominating the damage charts, at least being second or third or even first up there. We actually see Cupid getting just annihilated in the left lane. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, I mean, it, these picks aren't really paying off. And, you know, we want to, like, going into game two, these players have to realize that they need to step it up. They need to do better than they did this first game, or they're not going to win. And it's just going to be sweet. It came down to why Boxer was not banned for kind of, you know, a huge Vulcan ult does hit Mr. Business. He is extremely low. Red Team is aggressing onto the left lane. Phoenix, uh, best look in A is tanking it. He does take out Starkey. Ninja Monkey does get a nice Jean Clay ultimate, but he does not do enough damage being so far behind. And best look in A is just out of control right now as he gets another kill getting immortal status 11 kills with zero deaths best look in a is just outright carrying this they're and gonna go for the win yeah it looks like this game will be over i mean limbo is available looking to focus huge kind of cupid ultimate but it doesn't really matter as red team is going to try to end it and Really, they're gonna I, do it successfully. Yeah. I mean, looking at it, uh, especially as a professional player, Ace Pier, it came down to Jean Quay being picked and Bakasura not being banned. I mean, we don't see Jean Quay solo ever really picked. That's going to be the blunder of Blue Team and Starkey really kind of underperforming on Thor, going zero and six. Very unusual out of Starkey, right? It might be. Yeah, nerves. I mean, we usually see Starkey being a really good player. You know, we've seen him do very well for himself in the past, carrying some games even in the sub game qualifiers. I just I don't know what happened to him this game. He just kind of went into I don't know. I don't. I really don't know what happened to him. Kind of disappointing to see that as like. As a, a friend of Starkey, you know, talking to him in the sub mumble and stuff like that, he's a really nice guy. It's just, it's a shame. Honestly, I, I, I'd like to see him do well. And maybe in game two, he has something to show us. But for the most part, he has to improve. He has to do better than that. Okay, well, as we do see, the blue team is going to be the the first it's the first loss right i mean blue team did get a feel and really it's kind of a reminder best loki na is a strong soul laner so really it is up to ninja monkey to pick the correct matchup and be able to deal with kind of the red team's aggression mostly out of best loki na but if i had to give an mvp here obviously there are no points on the line here ace pier this is the final games I would give MVP to Best Loki NA going 11-0-3, making crispy rotations and picking up his team. I mean, he is a beast.